Um, all right. So Scott Adams has been in the news and um, I did more than listen to a, a 42 second clip. I actually listened to an hour and 51 minute uh, rant of his conversation, what which people took 42 seconds. And then I listened to an interview he did because I was like, I never thought of, Dil- you know, like I'm pretty good with people, you know, and Dilbert didn't seem to be offensive you know, as a, as a cartoon. So when this came out and when I saw the clip, I was like, there's something more to this. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me really listen. Cause I want to be fair. I don't want to do what everyone else is doing, which is discussing something off of a clip off of a, you know, even if you watch 10, 20 minutes, Mrs. is mad at me. Cause I sent him (laughs) the whole thing and made him (laughs) pick up. Although he was like, I'm sick of this guy, but I, I want to first play the clip that has everybody upset. Um, so I'm going to play the clip, clip number three. Let's let's play that. Uh, we're talking about Scott Adams, the creator of Dilbert, which is now um, no longer anywhere. Uh, every single outlet that has um, a newspaper that used to feature it no longer has. He lost his book deal. He His agent quit. Uh, he lost his agent. His backlist is gone. So he literally set himself on fire. Yep. Is it worth it, Scott? Is it worth it? Did, did you are you happy? And I'm going to say probably he is because he's got the nobody was talking about Scott Adams and Dilbert before this. So I'm going to say he's winning, even mm. though he might be a loser. Mm. All right. Play that first clip. So I, I think it makes no sense whatsoever as a uh, white citizen of America to try to help black citizens anymore. It doesn't make sense. It is no longer a rational impulse. And so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to back off from being helpful to black America because it doesn't seem like it pays off. Like I've been doing it all my life and I've been, the only outcome is I I get called a racist. That's the only outcome. (laughs) It makes no sense to help black Americans. If you're white, Uh, the, the it's over. Don't, don't even think it's worth trying. Mm. Mm. Poor guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I did uh, like you, Karen. I watched the whole thing and I was like, oh, God. Uh, wow. Yeah. So a few things, first of all, um, he's not a victim, even though he's playing the role of one. Um, and he's very rich. And he even said, I like attention. I'm an energy monster. This is when he was on Hotep Jesus, this uh, black guy that he sat with for another hour and change. Mm-hmm. Um, so so right there, he's telling you he loves attention. He's an energy monster because I kept asking, why is he doing this? But apparently, Renee and everyone listening, he's been doing this. Yes. <laughs> he's been yes. talk- like he has like 700 <laughs> clips on his YouTube channel, mm-hmm. 702, I think like he's been doing this. And I was thinking about this because there's a part in it where he talks about when he was in corporate America being told that he wouldn't get promoted because he was white and he was a male and he was fine with it because he just decided to go into an industry where his talent uh, would be enough. And so he started his cartoon. There is a duplicity going on with Scott Adams that um, I don't really care to examine. There's something else going on. Something happened to him. But I also feel like he's trolling. And I think because he's a humorist, he thinks he's being clever. Mm. But your your understanding of history isn't deep enough to be as clever as you think you are being right now. Like, I kind of get what he's trying to do, (laughs) but you are failing because you 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 you're starting the conversation, not at the beginning. Right. You're starting at the harm, your harm, your personal harm. You're not starting at the foundation of this country, which is I would have respected if you said race is a made up construct. What he said was everybody's racist. Well, that's true only because the notion of race is in and of itself problematic. Right. Mm -hmm. So if Mm -hmm. we could get there, maybe we can have a conversation. But if you're not starting a conversation with who made up whiteness, why are you white? Why am I black? What does it mean to be white or black in this country or abroad? And why does it mean to be white or black? If we can't start there, then we really can't have a conversation. But I wanted to play another clip. It's a little longer. Um, but he, he started this particular rant because Rasmussen 
Rat, Ratspusen. I don't know who the hell is Rat, Rasmus, Rasmussen. 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 Yes. Who are these people? Yes. The people with these polls, you know, I often joke and say polls are for strippers because I do believe <laughs> that polls are not even though they call it a science, it's not really a science because you're you're literally talking to people who could absolutely lie to you. Yeah. And the way that you frame a question, you and I know as journalists, means everything. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what they asked these people to come up with this poll that said that um, the, the question was, is, is it okay to be white? Number one, why are you asking that question? Right. right. Is it okay to be white? What What kind of question is that? Yeah. So the answer came back. 72 percent of people said, yes, it's OK to be white. And then 53 percent of black people. And again, who who did you talk to? Was it 10 people? Was it 100 people? Where do what a neighborhood? Thousand, would, yeah. What, the, the, the thousand people. Was, where? Yeah. Where? Yes. All over? Yeah. Like 53 percent, which is the majority of black people said, yeah, it's OK to be white. I mean, but it's a mm-hmm. stupid. Why are you asking me this question? That would have been my question. What 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 what's your agenda? But nobody asked that. So his whole hour and 50 minute rant was about this poll. And he said, you know, if let me let me just instead of putting words in his mouth, um, let me find the one where he said if uh, black uh, hold on most of. okay, here we go. Clip four. So here's a black woman who's agreeing that I should feel uncomfortable around populations of black people because some large group of them would have a reasonable, historically based, bad opinion of me. Now, this was my point, right? My point is that some large percentage, and I'm not sure that the Rasmussen poll had exactly the right percentage. One of the things that Hotep Jesus pointed out correctly is that the nature of the question was so open to interpretation you don't really know where, where that you know, would have fallen out if they'd asked the question differently. But whether or not nearly half of all black people have the opinion, or if it's only 25%, <laughs> it's still way too much. Way too much. <laughs> would, you ha- would you hang around in a group where 25% of them had a bad feeling about you? I, I recommend getting away from any group where 25% of them have a bad feeling about you. That's just not a safe place to be. Um, and it doesn't matter who you are, or what ethnicity you are, et cetera. Like if you're, if you're a black, uh, let's say you're a young black person and you had a chance to hang around with a bunch of white supremacists, it's probably a bad idea. I'd say run away. I'd say run away. Now let's say that they're not all white supremacists, but let's say they're not condemning them. You know what I mean? They're not white supremacists per se, but let's say there's a group of people who refuses to condemn them for whatever reason. If you were black, would you hang around with that group of people? I wouldn't. <laughs> and I, I would recommend that you don't either. Well, nice for the recommendation. Unfortunately, we live in America and most black people don't have an option. Unlike white folk who can run to the hills, we are living where we we are living and whiteness is ubiquitous. So like, how, how do we get away? Because I do believe that there are a lot of people who are not challenging white white supremacy and, and hate. There was a whole hate rally. I didn't see white people in the streets saying this doesn't represent us and go home. I didn't see there be I, like the pussy hat chicks. Where were y'all like, where were you at this rally of hate? Like for real, the 53 percent of y'all that voted for Trump, like I, I don't see there being an outrage around uh, you know, this nationalism and this hatred that has been fomented in this country uh, forever. So, yeah, like we don't have the luxury with your smug. Ha ha ha. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I watched I saw I watched the the out like you said, I, I watched the entire thing. Um, and that part that got him in such hot water was like, what, 10 minutes or or maybe whatever. But um, <clears throat> there were a couple things. Number one, the Rasmussen study or survey or whatever, they surveyed a thousand people. I'm always weird on surveys because to me that a thousand seems so inadequate to try and extrapolate from that thousand to, you know, whatever the entire country. That's the first thing. Rasmussen polls tend to lean right. That's why um, the former president 
always used those to show how, you know, his popularity and blah, blah, blah. But that was Rasmussen versus, say, Quinnipiac or, or what have you. And they also use telephone hard, you know, landlines when they're doing their surveys, which means they probably tend to skew older and more conservative. So those are things that we have, you know, when you you brought it up earlier, who did they ask? Who did they call? That kind of methodology matters because this is how those numbers come out and shake out. What young people do you know that even have a landline? Mike, I don't even think my children have ever used a landline. So, you know, you have that kind of thing. And then, um, you know, he kept saying that 53% said it was okay to be white. Then the then the other breakdown was there was a percentage, maybe 27% that said it was not okay. And then maybe 21%, I can't remember the numbers exactly, that were not sure. Okay, so he when he was first talking about it, he put all those numbers out. But mm -hmm. in follow-up conversation, he lumped the last two together as the not sure and the in the ones who said it was not okay, he lumped them together to act as if that group was a hate group and they were all saying it was not okay. So again, there were, when I watched that, there were all kinds of red flags. And I thought, that's not right. That he, he's not yeah. thinking that's just a, and that I'd not thought about it before, Karen, but you're right. That does sound like somebody who was just trying to elicit a response. Yeah. Um, and so as media, you know, uh, I contemplated, you know, should I talk about it? I tend to not give oxygen to trolls. Mm -hmm. And uh, Scott, let's be clear, because Scott Adams is a troll. He is trolling. Mm -hmm. He's trolling. And it's interesting um, how many people are biting, you know, taking the bait because, you know, as a dyed in the wool, he's not a Nazi. He's, you know, spent his whole career being what he considers a liberal. Now he's more libertarian, you know, politically. So he's playing a, a, a really wicked game of, I don't know if it's chicken or he just like, I'm tired of all of the gaslighting. So I'm going to join and gaslight because I feel like there's a level of gaslighting going on here as well because he's saying something. And I think in, in his need to be clever, you're you're causing more damage. Mm -hmm. And you're also because judging from what I'm seeing, even with the tweet, I tweeted at him. The people that are coming for me, I'm like, you don't even first of all, you don't know me mm -hmm. and even asking, know. who are you? Um, so Google's your friend. Number one. Number two. Yeah. Don't don't asking questions about me. You don't even know what my perspective is. You're making an assumption about me based on what my skin color mm -hmm. of, of where I would sit on this. You know, we're, we're very uh, deep thinkers here. We're not just going to jump on the bandwagon because everybody's jumping on Scott Adams right now. Negative and positive. Right. But I feel like, you know, he willfully came into this space to do something. 